Hey everybody, how you doing? It's me again, Truth Teacher, and I'm just coming at you with a very quick uh, live stream. So, you know how I do it. I always decide at the last second, you know, whether I'm going to do it or not. I don't know if anybody's going to join me or not, but um, anyway, I don't plan to be here very long at all, but um, I'm really trying to get out more content on a regular basis and dropping in and doing these quick live streams is the best way for me to do that. So you see the, uh, the title of the video, and this is something that I've been wanting to address for a few weeks now. Um, actually this came up, this issue came up on one of, uh, radicals streams. Um, and one of the interviews that he did, that he did, um, I forget the young lady that he was talking to. Um, I don't know. Very, you know, very attractive young lady. And um, hey, Tina, how you doing, sweetie? Do you remember the lady that um, Radical had on his live? Um, she was talking about the issue with um, black men and that, you know, black women are so oppressed by black men and they're not protected and all of that. And he did a interview with her also. I just can't remember her name right now. But um, anyway, you know, she mentioned a couple of things and um, <clears throat> I, there's certain things that I agree with and then there are certain things that I don't. <clears throat> um universe trip yeah um you know i do agree that there is a problem <clears throat> with violence towards women but where i disagree is this idea that out of every group of women on the planet Black women are the most likely to, the most likely to experience violence at the hand of their men than any other group on the face of the earth. And, you know, it, it's just a little tiresome <clears throat> hearing this kind of rhetoric because from my, from my opinion, based on what I see and what I experience, it's just, it simply is not true. Now, is there violence against black women at the hands of black men? Yes, there is. And I, for one, am certainly not going to make excuses for bad behavior. And I already did, you know, like a previous video looking at this issue of, um, you know, whether or not black men protect their women. <laughs> well, we're mean to you because you're a pain in the ass. And that's why. <laughs> and you damn well deserve it. Everything you get and then some. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I, I, I addressed this issue, you know, like there was an incident where there was a woman who was attacked and she was like, bit, I mean, like some crazy shit happened to her. She went into a liquor store and some guys wanted to buy liquor from her and she didn't want to accept. And they jumped her outside and bit her in her eye and all kinds of crazy shit. While... Everybody stood around watching and not doing anything. So, you know, I addressed that issue at length in that video. And, but still, this idea persists. And, um, you know, I tried to point out <clears throat> during that live stream that. <laughs> I hate you so much. <laughs> Such an asshole. <clears throat> you know, I tried to point out 
on that live stream that violence against women is something, unfortunately, that is experienced globally, right? There isn't any one group of women who I would say more than anybody else in the world, they're getting it the worst. Um, it's different in some ways, in different, you know, in different cultures, the way it's expressed. Um, but it's a problem that we see around the world. I mean, for example, over the summer, we had, you know, discussions about the fact that femicide in Puerto Rico is so serious that the government in Puerto Rico declared a state of emergency. Um, we also discussed that in the Dominican Republic, they're having problems with this as well. And I know for a fact that in Honduras and Colombia, this is also a big problem. Now, you know, bringing that up, though, it's like I feel that <clears throat> the young lady in question, it's like she heard what I said, but she didn't want to accept it. It's like she really is invested in this idea that Black women are getting it the worst out of anybody else. And... You know, I, I have to say that I really feel upset by this because I feel that there definitely is an agenda out here and it's nothing new. It's been going on for hundreds of years that people who are identified as black in this society have been targeted for a certain kind of negative publicity, right? and especially black men. So there's already been hundreds of years of negative propaganda about black men. And now I'd say within the past 15 years or so, there seems to have been a resurgence, especially on social media with this idea. And it really isn't true. And one of the things is, you know, I, I know that there's a whole segment on YouTube of black women who are, I don't know, in the divestment movement, you know, black men ain't doing nothing and they're, you know, so messed up and, you know, black women need to save themselves and go find refuge with other kinds of men. So I know that there's, a, you know, that sentiment that's out there, but I don't know, man. It, it just seems that people are falling for the propaganda. And here's the thing, man. Social media is not the real world. You have people that are making up these videos and then, you know, everybody jumps on the bandwagon and, you know, it gives, it gives a false impression. It gives a distorted impression of reality. And that's the problem with social media. It's a blessing and a curse. You know, then you have people that come up with these statistics. And Made From Energy, she, I mean, Universe Trip, she came up with these statistics to show out of every ethnic group in the United States, black women are being victimized by their men the most. And the point that I tried to make to her, which I don't think she was really receiving, was you cannot trust statistics all, all the time. Statistics can be very misleading. Now, here's the deal. There are a lot of ethnic groups here in the United States who are suffering from instances of domestic abuse. However, they are not very, you know, they're not very willing to come forward and to report things. 
And there's very many, there's, you know, there's several reasons for that. One of the reasons is cultural, right? Because there's certain cultures where it's considered shameful for a woman to discuss her family business out in public. You know, you don't, you don't involve outsiders in your personal, you know, stuff. You don't air your dirty laundry in public. So how are you going to really know what's going on? You know, for example, there are a lot of different Asian communities where mental health issues, you know, they have a lot of crises when it comes to mental health issues, when it comes to issues of domestic abuse and violence, but they're not going to come forward. It's very hard for these people to get the kind of services and attention that they need because there's such a big barrier against reporting to stand up and speak out. It's considered a shame. It's considered a disgrace. And a lot of times what you find in communities like this is that even when the woman is innocent and she's clearly the victim, a lot of times, unfortunately, hey, Rashid, what's up? What up, Guanaco? How you doing, man? A lot of times what you find is that when women in these kind of communities stand up and they start to speak up, hey, Terrell, what's up? They start to speak up. They become ostracized by their communities, right? So, for example... Let's look at a community like the Hasidic community, right? And, you know, it's like within that community, the family is everything. You know, so if you have a problem, you're supposed to deal with it within the family, within the community. We've begun to hear very recently of instances in the Hasidic community where there's been things like, you know, sexual abuse in their schools. And it's almost impossible for people to go to the police and report it. Because if you go to the police and you report something like that, you're kind of cut off from the community, you know? You're cut off from your family. It's like you're disowned. And so it's very difficult for you to face that kind of pressure and come forward. Who's going to want to come forward and go to the police? They're the outsiders, right? And these people are very suspicious of the outside world and understandably so because of their history, right? They haven't had exactly a great relationship between themselves and the non-Jewish world, right? So there's a lot of mistrust. There's a lot of suspicion going to outsiders. And so they keep it under wraps. They keep it in the home. Within the East you know, the South Asian community. Also, there's been a lot of reports now that are starting to come out of violence and abuse against women in their community. Usually, the way we find out about these kind of things is people who have, you know, they've just gotten to a point where they can't stand it anymore and they decide to leave the community. And so they go and they start reporting it to the police. And now we start to find out. But even so, even when people do come forward, it's very hard for outside agencies to really get a handle on how pervasive the problem is and to be able to help them because there is that deep-seated mistrust, you know? So you can look at statistics and say, this and that and the third and black people this and black people that and the statistics say 
you know, black men, you know, the instances of black men committing these crimes is so much more than any other group. But here's the thing you got to consider. <clears throat> the black community is part of the general, you know, United States society. And we have a very open culture, right? We're not brought up to think that our personal behavior becomes a shame to the rest of our family or our group, right? So because we are living in a Western environment, in a Western culture, we become more accustomed to being very open with things that are pop, you know, that things that are intimate and private in our lives, right? So we're more likely to report certain instances. Now, the other thing that you got to take into consideration is that when you're dealing with communities that are faced with the pressures of poverty, right? You're going to have more of these instances happening. And I really have to wonder, you know, how culpable the media is in this distorted image because there's a lot of poor white communities in this country. We know for a fact that there's a very big opioid epidemic happening in predominantly white communities. You can't tell me that there aren't going to be high instances of domestic violence in those communities. But is the media focusing on those communities or not? The same way that they're focusing on the counterpart Black communities. I think, and I'm sure that there's a lot of precedents to show that when it comes to crime, violent crime, et cetera, more attention is focused on people of color than there is on white communities who are facing the same struggles. You know, it's like we have this real fantasy in this country that white people don't face poverty and they don't deal with um, economic hardships. You know, it's this fantasy that we have, you know, that white is automatically associated with wealth and wealthy people don't have problems, right? Um that's not reality. So once again, you know, you can't just look at what you see in the media and statistics and all of these things and take it at, at face value. You just can't. So, you know, this idea that black men are beating up their women more than anybody else, it's a fallacy. It's a fallacy, but it's a fallacy that's been created in a certain cultural and historical context in this country where, let's face it, Black people have been put on the bottom of the social strata in this country because the servant class became Black people, people of African descent, right? Back in Europe, it was a whole different ball game. It was much more obviously a class issue, right? You had the people who were in the upper classes and the aristocracy, whatever. And then you had everybody else and they were the servant class. They were the bottom rung of society. And those are the people who for the most part migrated here to America to get away from the pressures that they were having in Europe and to have a chance at some kind of upward mobility because the doors to upward mobility in Europe were pretty much closed off. You know, if you were unfortunate enough 
to not have been born in the aristocracy, your chances of moving up the ladder were pretty slim. So that's why you had so many people leaving Europe, coming to the United States, where they could start their lives over again and maybe have a chance at moving up the ladder, right? When Africans began being imported over here as slave labor, they took the place of the poor white or the poor European, the peasant class, the servant class. So they became the bottom of the totem pole in the society. So once again, like I'm always saying, you have to understand that racism is a byproduct of a class structured system, right? And so since black people have been put on the bottom of the class structure, all of the negative propaganda that is associated with the lower classes is placed on black people. And they're seen in that way. And the ruling class <clears throat> in the society paints this picture that is constantly being perpetuated that they're just, you know, degenerates, they're genetically inferior, everything that you can imagine. And also there's a sensationalist aspect of this too, because let's face it, the news media, I mean, once upon a time, there was a certain thing as journalism where it was involved in showing you the truth of what's going on in society, but more and more it's become entertainment, right? And what gets people's attention more? What entertains people more than drama, right? So they're not going to tell you about all of the black communities where people are stable. They're not going to tell you about all the black people who are just getting up and working a regular job, paying their bills, paying their taxes, sending their kids to school. They're not going to show you that. They're going to go to the most economically distressed communities that they can find, and they're going to show you all the madness and mayhem that's going on. Because that's exciting. That gets people's attention, right? That gets more eyes on your news outlet, right? So that's what's going on. Now, another criticism that I hear is black men don't own anything and black women are more likely than any other group to be single mothers because black men ain't doing what they supposed to be doing and they don't own anything and yada, 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 yada. And once again, this is a bunch of propaganda, right? If we went back in time, 100, 150 years ago. The ethnic group that was the most distressed socially or the ones that we would hear these things about the most was not the African-American community. It was actually the Irish community. Back then, the Irish were seen as a threat because they were historically an underclass in Europe. And they were Catholic, right? And so the Protestant elite class here was really feeling threatened that their Anglo-Saxon Protestant way of life was going to be overturned by these, you know, savage Irish people. Irish men were seen as a threat. So Irish men were less likely than Irish women to find employment. People felt more comfortable hiring Irish women, even though the work, it was menial labor. They felt, they felt much more comfortable hiring Irish women than they did hiring Irish men. So what do you think the result of that was? What you found was 
homes where the women were the head of the family because they were the breadwinners, right? So in the Irish community at that time, the societies were matriarchal families because it was the woman that was bringing in all the money. She was the one that was supporting the family. So where did that leave the men? They can't find employment. So what do you think they do? They resort to alcoholism. Alcoholism was very, very pervasive. I mean, even to this day, we still have the stereotype of the drunken, you know, the alcoholic Irish. Where did you think that stereotype comes from? It comes from that time when Irish men were under a lot of economic pressure because they couldn't find employment, right? And so what does that do to you? It puts you under so much stress and tension. And what do you do? You try to find ways to alleviate that tension and that pressure. So you resort to alcohol. Alcohol back day, alcohol was the crack of its day back then. So now you have a lot of men who are unemployed and they're alcoholic. What do you think comes next when you have a situation like that? You're going to have a lot of domestic violence, right? Because you're frustrated and you're pissed off and your woman is pissed off because she's busting her ass, bringing in all the money and you sitting on your ass over there getting drunk and why can't you find a job and you ain't shit and blah, 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 blah. And next thing you know, you're bumping heads and then, it, you know, you start exchanging blows. That's what was happening. And then what happens when you have a domestic, you know, a situation where there's a lot of domestic violence happening? You have a lot of instances where the men just totally abandon the family. They leave. So all of that was happening. I mean, you know, look at history. For example, back in the day, you know, in the 1920s, you had the, the prohibition movement where alcohol was illegal, right? Do you know why the U.S. government instituted prohibition? Prohibition actually started, or the movement, started many decades before the 1920s, all right? Started, I want to say, in the late 19th century, early 20th century. And it was started by women, specifically for the reason that there was so much violence, so much domestic violence happening in a lot of these homes because the men were alcoholic and all of the chaos that was happening domestically because of alcoholism. And so they thought if they got rid of alcohol, they could get rid of all the domestic abuse, men abandoning their families, single mother homes and all of those things. What they really should have done was address the situations, the underlying causes that made that made men resort to alcoholism in the first place. And so, you know, there's a saying that those who don't learn from history are destined to be the victims of it. We're seeing the same things happening today if we look in certain segments of the black community. If this society really wanted to take care of things, they would address the issues of poverty within our society. They would address the issues in those distressed communities of unemployment, lack of education, lack of opportunities, so that people are less likely to find themselves in difficult situations where the family unit is destroyed. So I'm going to 
pretty much wrap it up here, but that's what I wanted to share. You know, this idea that black men out of any other group in the world, black men are the ones that are abusing their women more than anybody else. It's a fallacy. It's a myth. But unfortunately, it's a myth that a lot of people run with and ride with because, like I said, there's been a lot of propaganda. There's been centuries-long propaganda machine against the African-Americans and against African-American men in particular because the African-American has been the one who's been traditionally put on the bottom rung of society. I'm not trying to make excuses. Once again, I'm not making excuses for bad behavior. And I'm not saying that these things do not happen. But to single out black men above every other group of men and, oh, they're the ones that do this. No, that's that's very disingenuous and it's untrue. And it's just more negative propaganda that's been created by the society in order to further demoralize and denigrate people of African descent. And the other thing that I'd like to say is that I have to be very weary of, you know, people who come around and they just love to talk to you about there's racism, there's racism, there's racism, and this, this, that, and the third. You know, it's it's one thing to draw attention to injustices in society. But then there's a very fine line where it becomes a propaganda tool used to demoralize a group of people, right? Because if you keep here, if all you keep hearing over and over and over again is how fucked up your society is and your people are, what does that do to you emotionally? After a certain point, it just, it, it starts to break you down emotionally. And I think this is what we're seeing. When we see all of this, you know, commotion happening in the black community Black men talking about black women ain't shit. Black women talking about black men ain't shit. I think that this is a negative impact that has come from too much emphasis on the problems and not enough sitting down and trying to figure out, okay, what are the solutions? You know, at a certain point, all of this stuff becomes toxic. So yes, we do have our problems, we do have our challenges, but how is that different from any other group, you know? There's lots of other groups and I've traveled to those countries, I know what I'm talking about, I've seen it up close and personal. There's a lot of other groups and a lot of other communities in the world that are struggling with different issues around, you know, misogyny and sexism. It's not just the African-American community. As a matter of fact, you know, um, when I visited Japan, it was me and Lily. Lily was there with me too because, well, she's Japanese. And, you know, there's a lot of things that I really love about Japan. Compared to the United States, it's a much more safer society on the surface in terms of street crime and stuff like that, vandalism, you don't find those problems in Japan, not the way we have here in the United States. It's a very polite society, very orderly. And I was really amazed by all the things that I saw. And, you know, I thought to myself, you know, I looked at Lillian like, why the hell would you want to come to the United States and leave all of this? And then she started explaining to me what it's like being a woman in Japan. And especially a woman like her who 
didn't want to have that traditional life of getting married. Um, you can be fired from your job in Japan if they don't think you look, you know, just based on your looks. If your boss doesn't like the way you look, you can be fired because they want you to fit a certain standard of beauty. If you don't conform to that, you can be fired. There's a very big problem in that society of sexism. There's a very big problem of sexual assault happening on women in public to the point where there's certain trains where they had to make cars that are just women only cars because the instances of sexual abuse on the trains during rush hour when everybody's crowded in was so bad that they figured they had to do something about it and the most messed up part about it is that when these women are there and they're being sexually molested on the train, they're afraid to speak up because it's considered a disgrace for women to make a scene in public. There's instances of women who are being sexually assaulted on their jobs but they dare not file a police report against their attacker because if they do, they'll be ostracized by their society, by their community. And so these things go unreported and the violators go unpunished. There's a big problem of stalking in Japan to the point where a lot of women have been killed because maybe they're in a relationship with some guy and they decide to break up with him and he can't accept the fact, you know, his ego will not allow him to accept the fact that she doesn't want to be with him anymore because in his mind, she's his property. She belongs to him. So she has no right to, to leave him. And these men will go around and they will stalk these women. They'll break into their homes. They'll kill them. And a lot of times they don't even face like a lot of jail time when they do it. So, you know, there's a lot. Listen. I'm not saying that things are perfect. And I'm not saying, again, that there are not challenges in the African-American community. But this idea that Black women have it worse, more than any other group of women in the world, it's not true. It's a part of propaganda, this, like, this woke bullshit. And look, Unfortunately, I think we're getting to a point where people are really becoming disgusted with this whole wokeness, politically correct. You know, there were there was a time when there were definite there was a definite need to speak out against certain things in society, but now it's gotten to the point where it's just swung to the far extreme. And people are really getting sick and tired of it now, you know? And that's the problem. You got to know how to walk that fine line between calling attention to certain problems in society. And then it gets to the problem. It gets to the point where now everything is a problem. You know, it's like that syndrome of crying wolf. You know, everything is sexism everything is misogyny everything is it's just gone too far and what i fear is that it's going to get to the point where 
when you do have people who have legitimate issues, it's going to start falling on deaf ears because people have become desensitized and just fed up and disgusted. And they're not going to be willing to listen and to do something about it. So it's been 40 minutes now. And basically, them's my thoughts. If you have any thoughts, opinions, by all means, you can share it in the comments down below, as long as you're respectful and polite. Um, but once again, like I like like I said, um, this idea that black men are the most violent group of men against their women, black women are not protected by their men. They're the only group that can't, you know, that can't count on their men to protect them. This is all bullshit. This is all bullshit. If you sit down and look, you don't have to go any further than on YouTube and just look up and see what women in different communities around the world are going through. Some of this stuff is really horrific. Black women in the United States are not dealing with a lot of the things that other women in other countries and other societies are dealing with. Let's just keep it a hundred, you know? Uh, hold on a second. <laughs> Where have I been? I've been busy, man. I've got a lot on my plate. Black women are some of the meanest ones in the world. Once again, this is a perfect example of what I'm talking about. This is negative propaganda. And it's not saying, you know, this is what I have a problem with, this thing. Oh, black women ain't shit. Black men ain't shit. It's not saying that we don't have our problems. We do. Every community in the world. Look, you name me one place on this planet Earth where there's complete harmony between the sexes. Go ahead. I'll wait. I don't know of any. There's a reason why there was a feminist movement created, okay? The feminist movement was not created because of black men. Can we just keep it real? Okay, and by the same token, this shit, oh, black women are the meanest in the world. Have you been everywhere in the world to make that statement? I'll wait. Thailand, yeah. And what's happening if you look in Thailand? Let me tell you, man. There's some grimy shit that happens in Thailand, okay? All right? So black, black women are not being sold into prostitution by their family because they're so damn poor. Like what happens in Thailand. A lot of you guys that like to run over there to have your little sex tours, what you don't know is that a lot of the women in those places are slaves. They've been sold into sex slavery by their families. So yeah, I mean, come on, you're a sex tourist in a place that's designed to cater to foreign men. Those women ain't going to be giving you no attitude. They're going to be they're going to put on their best poker face and show you what you want to see. But trust and believe if you living in that society for real, for real, and you're dealing with some real women, you're going to be dealing with the same shit that men and women go through everywhere else in the world. Don't believe the hype. I don't want to hear that bullshit about South America either. Miss me with that bullshit, okay? Because when you get there, when you're really living in that society, there's a lot of grimy-ass chicks in South American countries too. Miss me with that bullshit. You need to talk to somebody that don't know, because I do know. Don't forget, half of my family is from South America. I got family all over Latin America, okay? 
So I know. Some of the grimiest chicks that I ever saw in my life were Puerto Rican and Dominican women, okay? I don't want to hear it. They can be just as grimy as anybody else because at the end of the day, they're human beings just like anybody else. Black women choose to marry the government once again. Negative propaganda, it's all bullshit. It's not true. It's not true. I live in one of the most diverse cities in America. The welfare office ain't nothing but like what, four blocks away from where I live? Most of the people that you see going in there are not black women. I see Egyptian women. I see Filipino women. I see Salvation women. I see Latinas. I see a whole lot more people represented in greater numbers than black women. Black women actually make up the smallest group. All right, I'm talking about shit that I see with my own eyes. So this idea that black women are married to the government how the fuck is that possible when black people only make up 13% of the population? The majority, the overwhelming majority of people who are on welfare are white. White women, not black women, white women, white women. And a whole lot of other ethnic groups who come here, who migrate to this country, I'm not in denial. I'm telling you what I see with my own eyes. I live in this community. I know who's got the food stamps when I go to the when I go to the supermarket. I see who's using food stamps and who's not. And once again, I'm not saying that we don't have these issues in our communities because we do. We do. I'm just being realistic about it. And this shit that Black women more than anybody else. Black men more than anybody else. What I'm saying is that's some bullshit. If you're going to believe this bullshit about black women being married to the government, well, then on the flip side, you have to also accept the negative propaganda about black men. And I know you're not trying to tell me no bullshit. You know, I know you're not going to try to come here and tell me no Chem 123 bullshit about black men. There's no better option. <laughs> There's no better option. Listen, grimy ass stories. I'm surrounded by people of all different ethnic groups all the time. I had a neighbor right here on my floor, just two doors down from me. He was um, East Indian from Kenya, East Indian descent from Kenya. He was um, Muslim, him and his wife were Muslim. When I moved in here, she was, you know, she was a nurse. Well, she still is a nurse. She's just not here anymore. She was a nurse and I would see her every day and she has on her hijab and everything and then she got pregnant they had like two kids next thing i know is like instead of wearing the full hijab now she's got on a little headscarf and next thing i know the headscarf is gone no headscarf anymore next thing i know i'm like i don't see his wife i don't see his kids i said dude like you know we're where they at? Homegirl upped and left him, took the kids. Why? Because she was busy getting her back blown out by some Puerto Rican dude that she met on her job. And then after divorce came through, that's when he started telling me the whole lowdown because I thought 
you know, on the surface, she looks so prim and proper and so quiet, you know. He starts giving me the lowdown about what this chick was real. Listen, when I tell you she was, she was all kinds of hoe. <laughs> Back from when they were in Kenya, before they even got over here, she was a hoe. <laughs> all right? And the thing about it is that his cousin tried to warn him about her, and he didn't want to listen. But when he got over here, that's when, you know, when she got over here and she got her green card and her papers and everything, and that was all good, and she's making her money, that's when she decided to show her complete entire ass. And even when he complained to her father, she's like, my father can't do shit. I'll do whatever the fuck I want. I'll fuck whoever I want. So don't believe the hype. Listen, I got buddies. How much of this, how true do I really want to get? Because <laughs> I can get my ass in trouble. <laughs> I got to live in this community. But let's just say there are certain ethnic groups who live in this community that I know because I got friends and they tell me the lowdown. They tell me the dirt. You see them in the street. And they look all prim and proper and conservative. But what they don't know is that, what you don't know, is that when their man is at work busting his ass to put food on the table, she's busy out there getting her back blown out by some young dude. And these are the ones that you think, oh, they're so conservative. They're so... This, this, that, and the third, yeah. Busy getting her back blown out when her man at work. And in some of these communities, they don't believe in divorce. You cannot get a divorce. And so what you do, they'll separate. But they will never come out and put their dirt in public the way we do. So you don't know what's going on behind closed doors. But me, I know where, listen, I know the shit stains on everybody's drawers, okay? So miss me with this bullshit that there's some group of women, oh, they're more not, that's some bullshit. I'm telling you, I promise you, it's some bullshit. Men and women are the same everywhere you go in the world. No, I ain't talking about Jamaicans. I'm talking about another group of people, and that's why kind of got to, you know, I got to live with these people, so I can't be too specific. But trust me when I tell you, there's grimy women everywhere you go in the world. And yes, I've heard horror stories about Dominican women too, and I've seen it with my own eyes. So once again, there's horrible women in every group, all right? Asian women are so submissive. They're so passive. Bullshit. Bullshit. I've seen it with my own damn two eyes. What happens when these men go over to Asia and they marry these delicate little lotus blossoms and get their ass over here and once they get their green card? Then the shit all switches up. When he ain't moving the way she wants to, and then she fucking be stepping a foot in his ass, slapping him up and all kinds of shit. It happens. Don't believe the hype. That's some bullshit. <laughs> they live happily ever after. Yeah, well, you know what? And I also believe, I believe you. And I also believe in the two theory and all of that good shit. Don't believe the hype. Everywhere you go in this world, you're going to find tension between men and women. It just exists everywhere. Some places are a little bit better. Some places are a little bit worse. Some places are really, really worse. But this idea that somehow or another, black women just don't measure up 
or black men don't just measure up. That's some bullshit. Everybody in this world is going through some kind of some kind of challenge, okay? Now you might find an ethnic group, they don't have the same challenges that you your group has in the same areas, but you better trust and believe that they got some other kind of bullshit going on. Don't ever believe the hype, okay? So yes, are there grimy ass black women out there? Yes, I've seen them all my life. I know they exist. I'm not in denial. But what I'm also trying to say is that you have to be realistic. Not all women are like that. Not all black women are like that. And by, you know, and by the same token, I'm not saying that there's no grimy ass black men out there because I've seen it. I've grown up seeing it all my life. A lot of dysfunctional black men. But to say that is everybody is not true. And I wouldn't even say most. Most of who? You can't say most of everybody. No. But if you go into a segment of the community that is facing economic hardship and certain deprivations, you are most likely to find dysfunctional behavior in those communities, regardless of what kind of ethnic group you're looking at. They can be white, they can be Asian, they can be African American, Caribbean, Latino, whatever. Those are the places you're going to find the most tension and the most dysfunction. Color purple syndrome happens everywhere, all around the world in every society, in every ethnic group. And when you're faced with economic struggles and tension, it only intensifies those problems. Saudi Arabian women are very submissive, but Saudi women, that's born in late, blah, 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 are changing a little bit more challenging. Well, I mean, look, a society like Saudi Arabia, what choices do they have? They don't live in a democracy. So, yeah, they got to toe the line. I mean, like, come on, man. It's only been, what, in the past few years that women even were allowed to drive? And back when I was young, they used to have a special police um, I think they were called the Mutawa that would go out in public and they had these like sticks. And if women were not behaving the way they thought women should behave or they weren't dressed the way they thought women should be dressed properly, they would they would get beaten in public. So when you live in a society like that, where everything is so controlled, you're not going to be raising a fuss. You know, every place is not the United States where we have this idea of freedom and equality and you can do whatever you please. And that shit don't exist everywhere. You know, we're really, we're really spoiled, you know, and we really don't understand just how many advantages we have compared to some places in this world. We really don't. You go to Singapore and you you chew bubble gum in public, you get your ass beat. <laughs> you know, it's like every place in this world ain't, you know, anything goes like it's here in the United States. Because once again, Marquise, what what choice do they have? When you're a woman in India and you live in a society where if you don't bring enough ma- money to the marriage, your husband's family can set your ass on fire in the kitchen and make it look like an accident.
and you don't have the same kind of constitutional protections that you do in the United States, what choice do you have? It's a completely, you can't compare them. And this is what I'm saying. You can't make that comparison. It's an unfair comparison. They don't have the same freedoms that we do over here. You're talking about a society where if you step out of line as a woman, your chances of getting married are next to nothing. And not only will you be ostracized, but your entire family. So when you're carrying that kind of pressure that your behavior affects not only yourself, but every member of your family as well, you're not going to be so quick to show your ass and carry on. But... Have I seen women in Egypt carrying on? Hell yes, I have seen it. It happens. It does happen. So once again, don't believe the hype. You can't always believe the hype, okay? So we need to stop this negative propaganda and we need to stop feeding into it ourselves of throwing each other under the bus. We need to stop it. And I, for one, I don't buy into this bullshit. I just don't. And I'm sorry. As far as I'm concerned, I cannot support this, this, this kind of rhetoric where we've got our men and women trashing each other. It's bullshit, and I don't support it, and I don't agree with it. And... All it takes is just a little bit of investigation to see the fact that even though we do have a lot of problems and a lot of challenges, um, we're doing a lot better than a lot of other people in this world. And so we need to keep a straight head on our shoulders as we fight for justice and equality we also have to recognize the fact that we have made a lot of progress and we're better off than a lot of other people in this world. Believe you me, there's some places where you would not want to be. You don't want to be a lower class person in India. You don't want to be a Rohingya right now in Southeast Asia. You don't want to be a Turkmen in Jordan. You don't want to be a Roma in Eastern Europe. There's a lot of people in this world who are doing much worse than we are now. And that's not saying that we don't have any problems and, you know, we need to go to the other extreme now and deny the fact that, you know, Oh, there's no such thing as racism and white supremacy. No, we don't have to go to that street. But we do have to recognize the fact that it's not as bad as what a lot of people would try to make it out to be. And I think that kind of talk is very psychologically destructive. It doesn't serve us. So, everybody... That is all I have to share tonight. Thank you all for whoever came in. Marquise, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for your comments. Uh, Rico Sama, thank you for your comments. Uh, who else was here? Aleem, thank you. Who else was here? Guanaco, thank you for coming by. I didn't even see what you had to say. Marquise, try not being... Oh, you're such an asshole. Lido Lee, thank you for coming by. Radical Pain in the Ass, thank you for coming by. Terrell. Tina, thank you for coming by, Tina. Everybody, I will see you another time. I'll try to see if I can get, um, I don't know, time to have a live stream where you guys can come in and we can sit down and, you know, have a discussion with each other as long as we keep it respectful.
But for right now, I'm just like stealing time. I've done like all of my other chores and stuff for the day. So I'm just doing this right quick. So everybody, you know, as I always say, I'm wishing everybody tonight, if you can hear my voice, love and light, peace, prosperity, and perfect health until I see you the next time. And to all of my Black people, my African-American brothers and sisters out there, keep your head up because you are an awesome, amazing group of people. You have absolutely no reason whatsoever to hang your head down or feel less than anybody else in this world. You are amazing, and I love you as always. Peace.